What's happening YouTube? It's been a while since we've done an unboxing video, but today I wanted to take a look at this new product from Collective Minds. Now, I shouldn't say new, but it's new to us. We brought it in, and it's actually so heavily sought after that when we brought them in, they were just flying off the shelves, and that is the Strike Pack FPS Dominator. Now, what it is, it's a next-gen wired mod pack that you can add onto your controllers that allows you to do many different things, such as auto-running. You can change the button layouts so that you can actually do drop shots, um, quick scoping, tons of different opportunities, and it's all moddable both on the fly as well as using a program on your computer that you can plug it into and it fixes all for you. You can actually download tons of different presets. But without further ado, let's go ahead and take a look at both the PS4 and the Xbox One version. So if you've never heard of the brand Collective Minds, you should definitely familiarize yourself with them because they are one of the industry leaders in elevated gaming accessories. So in each box of the Strike Pack FPS Dominator, you're going to get the pack itself. And as you can see, they look a little bit different because, of course, the controllers for a PS4 and an Xbox One are different in size and in nature. So the next thing you've got is these cables long enough, which is great. Uh, you're actually going to have to plug them into your console while you're gaming. However, it's also used to plug into your PC so you can download presets, you can create your own button layouts, and there's tons of information on the website to get the app, so you can definitely do that. And then last but not least, you've got the fun stuff, the warranty, and the instruction manuals in this little notebook here. So those are the three things you're going to find in the pack. I'm going to go ahead and put them on real quick because they are very, very simple to use. As you can see, it just clips onto the front. I'll do the PS4 first. So we'll just push that on just like that. And the actual button or the back swings around to cover the PS button. So you'll have it clipped on just like that. So actually what it does is it hooks on to the microphone or the little speaker right there, I should say. So there's three little grooves that stick into the speaker. So it clips on nice and tight. And then this gets pushed in. As you can see, I've probably turned on my PS4 here. That's where the charging cable will go. You've actually got two buttons underneath that you can use to change between the presets. So as you can see, all these lights will light up. When you create presets, you can actually change between all of them. And then you've got the two triggers down here that you can actually use to change your button layout. And I'll explain what that's for later. So as you can see on the Xbox One controller, you're going to plug it in there. It actually replaces the battery pack, so that's why you're going to have to use the cable to keep it plugged in. There's your buttons to change the different button layouts as well. And then, of course, the paddles are on the bottom. So what these paddles do for you, so again, the Xbox One paddles are here, the PS4 paddles are down here. Normally, when you're gaming, you're going to have A or X as your action button. You've got square or X as your reload button. You've got triangle or Y as your switch weapon, and circle and B as your crouch button or lay down button in games like Call of Duty, Battlefield, stuff like that. I'm just going to put one down. What this will allow you to do is you can keep your thumb on, say, the circle button, which is lay down, while using the trigger to reload. That way, if you run out of ammo, you can actually get into cover while you're reloading. So it's going to make your gameplay a little bit faster. Of course, it's not going to really give you additional buttons per se because most games are designed to use all the buttons that are on the controllers. However, you can map the layout out. That way you can use your, your we call them wasted fingers down here that you aren't really using down at the bottom to create different button layouts. So you can use it as, say, reload or switch weapon. If you wanted to switch weapon because you are out, you can switch weapon as you're laying down. So it's going to give you a little more flexibility on how to use those action buttons that are on your right thumb. So that is the point of the Strike Pack FPS Dominator. Now, this does retail for $49.99 here in Canada, and it is a great tool. I'm telling you, tons of programmers use it. And as you can see on the box, it does list a bunch of different uh, layouts and, and options that this will give you. Now, uh, in professional uh, regulated play, usually they aren't allowed. However, when you're playing at home, it does give you an, an advantage to allow for rapid fire, drop shots, quick scoping, jitter fire, auto run, and turbo 2.0, and much more depending on the games that you're playing. Thanks for tuning in to this episode of EB Unboxes of the Strike Pack FPS Dominator from Collective Minds. If you have any questions, share them in the comment section below because down there, if I don't know the answer, I will take that question and reach out to Collective Minds and get you the answer. Also, smash that subscribe button and that like button. It really helps us out. And until next time, guys, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time on EB Unboxes.